That's right. Say, explain to me why why God is not the origin point for any or all facts. How did you determine that? And then they're like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah, I think it's a very interestingly phrased question. Yeah, it's a legit, it's a it's a legitimate question. You see, the reason why they say there's no evidence for God is because they realize that they cannot defend the statement there is no God. But when you say there's no evidence for God, that statement necessarily entails the falsity of God. But they're not aware of it because they're they're dum dums. Do you understand that? He said the purge of proof is all the atheists. Can you hold on for a sec? Um, what, did, what, what did you say, Alex? I was asking if you thought, oh, I really had my thought on the tip of my tongue. I lost it for a second. Give me a moment. Oh, um, hey, I was boy, asking if only be one. I can't, I can't decide from how you're asking. Do you think God is an unfalsifiable claim or no? Um, why, are you, why, why are you raising the falsification criterion? Why would that matter? Because it, se it seemed like when you were asking earlier about... Um, whether or not do you so think, you said his do, you computer, think for example, do you think that's a do you think that's a do you think that that's a viable and valid objection i'm sorry i didn't know that i made it an objection you, i was just asking you, a question you, no you, you yeah you raise the issue of the falsification criterion the only time that's okay. raised is to use it in reference to god that god is unfalsifiable the only people the only people who raise the falsification criterion are either agnostics or atheists are you aware right. of that yeah. Right. I, I guess that would be okay, my So are, are, are you an atheist? I, I, so I used to identify, well, you're about to, I, guess I didn't ask, I didn't ask you about what you do to identify. Listen carefully to my words. I'm not, I'm not, we I'm we must have internet myself. connection. You're over talking me. You see in the last server, you had a habit of over talking me and now you're over talking me again. Now listen very carefully. I'm speaking English, speaking English. Are you an atheist? Uh, yes, I, I am. Okay, wow. See, that wasn't hard, was it? Okay, okay. I'm waiting. Now, atheists cannot defend their atheism. It's incoherent. Now, how upon what basis is the existence of Oh, but, excuse me. Let me get back to the question of falsification. Do Please. you do you think that in order for God to be worthy of belief that he must be in principle falsifiable? No, of course not. Then why did you raise the falsification criteria? Because of a previous question you had asked someone else. I was just trying to understand what you thought. How, how is the falsification uh, criterion relevant to God if you're not talking about falsification and empiricism? How is that relevant at all to God? When you were asking him about his computer, you were saying that the object in front of him has some kind of ultimate starting point. I don't know if you want to repeat yourself for better clarification. Yeah, any, any, any dependent fact will only be dependent because there's something that is ultimate, absolute, and unconditionally non-dependent. And if you deny that, then you can't have dependent facts. Mm -hmm. It's incoherent to say that there can be dependent facts that don't ultimately depend upon something. Okay? I'm processing. Now, it's a, it's a good thing you didn't pursue the falsification criteria vis-a-vis -vis God because that backfires. Because if you try to say that God is unworthy of belief because he's unfalsifiable, of then what so. you're going to say is that then, then God is not worthy of belief. And if God is not worthy of belief, then you cannot, then you cannot falsify in principle the not God position. Right. So I people, guess. people who wield the falsification criteria, and it cuts their own philosophical head off. Okay. Yeah. I just guess for me, I, I had some personal experiences within religion that had um, kind of given me the turn off to the idea. Of yeah. It. That's not why, that's not, that's not why you're an atheist. You're just, yeah, fooling I, yeah, I, know, I, under, I understand. No, that, that, I, that has nothing to do with it. You're an, you're an atheist. I, almost, I was so close to being, no, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you why you're an atheist. The reason why you're atheist Please. is because you, you want to be autonomous. Do you know what I mean by that? Like I don't have a dictator. No, you want to reserve the right for yourself to determine what the nature of reality is and therefore of be, the, be the adjudicator. Hold on a second. What I'm telling you is ironclad. You cannot escape it. Okay. Now, if you want to attempt to refute it, when I get done, be my guest, but it's going to be a lost cause. Okay. You want to be autonomous, which means you are going to reserve the right for yourself either by yourself or in conjunction with other human minds 
to determine what the ultimate nature of reality is as a frame of reference so that you can then be an interpreter of what are dependent facts. Now, I'm going to ask you a simple question. Okay. Since, you're an, since you're an atheist, then you reject the notion that God is the autonomous one and that our reason has to be in conformity to the mind of God and how the mind of God has been revealed. So then you deter in order in order to give interpretations of dependent facts, you are going to have to make a decision and decide as far as you're concerned, what the ultimate nature of reality is in order for you to even invoke dependent facts. So do you make a determination by yourself what the ultimate nature of reality is? I don't think it's dependent on me. I think, I, no, I don't. Sir, make, sir. I oh, don't then it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it, is it dependent upon God? Um, I guess not, no. Good, then, then you decide for yourself by yourself or in conjunction with other human minds that you individually or human minds collectively together will decide what the ultimate nature of reality is. So then you can have a framework to present and have intelligible dependent facts. So since you do not, you're not turning to God as the, uh, the ultimate nature of reality, then in other words, facts are only what they are because of God, God's existence, okay? So you're, you're going to decide, you, you told me you're an atheist. So you right. do not accept, you do not accept that God is the ultimacy of reality. So I'm gonna ask you a question. Since you do not need God as the framework for facts, then what is the ultimacy of reality that is absolute, unconditionally non-dependent, and provides for the intelligibility of any dependent facts? What is that ultimacy, sir? I think previously you'd asked me if I thought there was like a static piece of this. This is the kind of similar question. I'm, I'm, I'm at, answer my question I ask you now. I'm trying to understand it. I apologize. What, since, since God is not the ultimacy of reality, the absolute that provides for intelligibility for all dependent facts, then you will have in mind, either consciously or unconsciously, something else that is absolute that provides for the intelligibility of dependent facts. What is it? Because you're the one who decides what that is, not God. What is it? Right. Um, and because I don't know, that means that my atheism is flawed? I'm waiting for an answer, sir. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so you don't know. Then so what you so that when you as an atheist say that I, I have no need of God to be the ground of all being, that God is the basis of all not only dependent facts, but the intelligibility. So do you believe it's coherent as an atheist to present or verbalize dependent facts that ultimately do not depend upon anything? Is that coherent? Hmm. I, I, so I, I, the, the, I guess not uh, saying just outright that uh, with nothing that's dependent, but I, I still think I'm a little confused on. I'll ask the question again. Is it coherent to invoke dependent facts, okay, that ultimately do not depend upon anything? Is that coherent? Um, if you take the God bit out, I think that's, that's where you're losing me. But yes, yeah, so stating that is, yeah, no, I, I guess facts would have to be dependent on something right if 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 i if i make do you, do you accept arbitrary claims if i tell if i say to you god exists do you accept that you mean claims without evidence sure no I I, no okay good so you don't accept okay so you don't accept claims without evidence yes okay could you could you tell me what is your what is your evidentiary claim for the external physical world Without a feeling, with, with yeah, yeah. What is your evidence that the external physical world? Uh, what is the evidence that? Because if you appeal to physicality and sensation, you're begging the question. Sensation. Oh, you mean like feelings? Yeah, you can't. You can't appeal to the external physical world that it is real because you're presupposing the thing you're trying to prove. So yeah, how could you told you just told me that you 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 require evidence for everything that you believe in. Do you have evidence that laws of thought are universal and absolute at all times and all places? Do you have evidence of that? I would never state that they are universal. Oh, okay, well then you would be screwed because that, that way that whenever you speak about states of affairs outside of your immediate experience, how do you know uh, if contradictory states of affairs can't exist? 
I guess, based in, in on order, in, experience. In, you know, you're not, you're not, un, you're, you're not under. This is going right out of your head, sir. You have been, Maybe. you have been brain, you have been brainwashed by an educational system. Yikes! That all, all beliefs have to have evidence. But you see, you, you believe in the uniformity of nature, but you don't have a rational justification. You believe it on intuition. You do not believe it because of evidence. Do you understand? Do you do you understand? Do you understand that the causal principle and the uniformity of nature are fundamental presuppositions of scientific empiricism, and that it has to presuppose them to even do any empirical endeavors? Science cannot prove its foundation, sir. Are you aware of that? You're saying the science is based off of it. Science cannot prove the causal principle. Science cannot prove the uniformity of nature. Science has to presuppose the causal principle and the uniformity of nature, even to look through a telescope or a microscope. So you see, you, you say, oh, I want evidence for everything I believe, but you have a number of foundational beliefs for which you don't have evidence for. Now, yeah, yeah, I now, the okay, now what is your, okay, what is, okay, watch this. You say you need evidence yeah, for things that you believe in. Now, are your invocation of dependent facts coherent? Invocation of dependent facts coherent. I believe yeah, so. When, when, okay, good. What is the evidence that there is something ultimate that provides for your dependent facts? What is it? Because if you don't tell me, if you don't tell me, you have now violated your own principle. I understand. I'm really struggling with the question, though. You said you require evidence for everything you believe in. So in order for you to invoke the intelligibility of dependent facts, you're going to have to tell me of what the evidence is of that which is ultimate. What is it that is ultimate that foundationally will provide for the intelligibility of dependent facts? Because if you say, I don't know, then your dependent facts don't depend upon anything which would make them incoherent. So for, for example, um, if you believe in evidence, that means there has to be causal relations. But how do you establish causal relations, sir, without begging the question? You can't. So what is your what is your evidence of that that there is something ultimate that provides for the intelligibility of dependent facts? Well, you already answered that. You said I don't know what it is. I, so you don't. So you don't have evidence for any dependent facts, do you? So there is what is in the natural world, and I try. Hey, to did you did you hear did you hear my question? It wasn't. Do a you question. have you told me what do you have ultimate evidence? Do you have ultimate evidence? I have demonstrable evidence. That will provide. Okay, listen to me carefully. You're not you're not listening. Mm -hmm. Do you have ultimate evidence of that which is ultimate and absolute so that you can invoke dependent facts? Because if you can't tell me what a dependent fact ultimately depends upon, then your presentation of dependent facts are meaningless because it doesn't depend upon anything. Yeah, I think that's where we lose each other. I think I just I don't. No, I no, we're, we're not. Yeah, that that's a th that's a throwaway phrase. That's a that's a diversionary con. What else do you uh, want me to say? Concept. Now, are, um, can you have you can you that. have an intelligible? Yeah. See, you just keep on over talking. Wah 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 wah. You know, like an emotional woman. Now, what I asked you was this: If you're going to invoke any dependent fact, a fact will either be dependent or non-dependent. Okay. Now. If, do you have the ability in your not God world to invoke intelligible dependent facts? Yes. Okay. Do intelligible dependent facts require a foundation and without which they will not be intelligible? Yes. Fine. What is the ultimate foundation that is absolute non-dependent? That is the basis of the intelligibility of any dependent fact. What is yeah. it? This is where you throw the word absolute in, and that's where I just. What? It, the, ab, absolute. Okay, sir, if you deny, you see, this is going way over your head. If I you understand. do not, if you do not, oh, don't over talk me again. You don't know. You don't know what you're talking about. You think you understand, but you don't. Do you accept that there is something that is absolute and non dependent? No. Okay, that now you're screwed because now whatever dependent fact that you invoke, it doesn't depend upon anything. There's nothing for it to depend upon. Therefore, it's a meaning. It's a meaningless fact. 
I, I don't know what else besides mathematics and laws of physics could okay no that, that, okay that you know that okay what you just did was a deceptive deceit deceitful response you're it the one who taught divert, me. it was a it was a diversionary response now it, the intelligibility of dependent facts is going to be only in virtue of what it ultimately depends upon okay now do you understand that the apple on the counter will be intelligible metaphysically either of God or not God. It cannot be intelligible based upon God or not God. Do you understand that? I don't. Okay. An apple will either be dependent upon God or not God. That, that statement is necessarily true. Gotcha. Good. Now, in order to have intelligibility for a fact, you're going to have to invoke what it actually depends upon ultimately otherwise it's unintelligible in other words it doesn't depend upon anything okay for example suppose you said there's an apple on the counter and i say what does it depend upon and you give me a laundry list you say well it could it it, it, it could be one it could be two three four and you give me ten different things and i say well, which one does that apple on the counter depend upon? And you go, I don't know. Therefore, the apple doesn't depend upon anything. In my worldview. Yeah, you're not, you're not getting it. I, I am systematically showing you how <laughs> incoherent your atheism is. I think because I don't know something doesn't mean that it can't be. You're not, you're not understanding. I want everyone in the room to notice who's a Christian. This is a pure object lesson of the sinful human nature that is in denial, where one does not want to give up their autonomy, even in the face where their worldview is exposed as completely incoherent. Can really you have, in, can you know. have, be quiet, can you have intelligibility for a dependent fact that doesn't depend upon anything ultimately? Yeah, no, that would make it a fact. It would be unintelligible then, right? Yeah, it wouldn't be a fact. Good. In your God-free world, what do all of your dependent facts depend upon? Prior experience. Ultimately. No, ultimately. Uh, I mean, sometimes I change my mind, so I don't... I mean, really listen, no listen, listen, listen. E e either, 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 either you are to to totally clu clueless right now, or you're being deceitful and dishonest. Listen carefully to my question. You know so far by dealing with me that I ask very carefully worded questions. They are non-ambiguous, they are circumspect. Now, very carefully, whenever you invoke any fact that is a dependent fact, what does it ultimately depend upon for its viability? Uh, its evidentiary value. Okay, I'm gonna mute you. If you if you if you give me another deceptive answer, you're going to be muted. That was a deceptive answer. That was a throwaway phrase because you don't know what else to say. Now, one more time. Does does the apple on the counter ultimately exist and have intelligibility as a dependent fact because of God? No. Good. Now is the apple on the counter without God intelligible? Uh, yes. Good. What it? What is it that ultimately exists 